And we are, of course, talking about the UK needing to consider changing its asylum laws to deter migrants from crossing the English Channel. This is according to the Prime Minister. The PM has said that it was currently very difficult to legally return people who arrive in the UK from France using small boats. It comes, of course, as Immigration Minister Chris Philp is set to meet his French counterpart in Paris later today to discuss the issue. Now, so far this year, more than 4,000 people have successfully crossed the English Channel this way. More than 677 made that journey on small vessels between Thursday and Sunday alone. Boris Johnson says it's vital the issue is tackled. The activity of cruel and criminal gangs risking the lives of these people, taking them across the channel in potentially unseaworthy vessels. We want to stop that, working with the French, make sure that they understand that this is a very, very bad and stupid and dangerous and criminal thing to do. And we'll take your calls. 03444991000 in a moment. Henry Bolton, who's advised numerous governments on strategic border management and security challenges. First Lord Alf Dubbs, Labour life peer and one of the Czech children rescued uh, from the Nazis in the, kinder, uh, in, in, in the kinder transport is with us. Lord Alf Dubbs, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon to you. Uh, uh, of course, there isn't just one uh, migrant story. I mean, not every story is the same as the previous story. What are you making at the moment about what we're seeing with the English Channel. What's your assessment of that? Well, obviously, I think people traffickers are horrible people. They risk the lives of people for personal gain, and I think they've got to be dealt with. However, quite a few of the people who are in Calais are people who've got connections, they've got family here, their children have got family here. And, you know, we're talking about, all right, 4,000 is quite, quite a large number over the last week or so. But the fact is, compared to the people arriving in France, it isn't very large. And we've got to deal by cooperating with the French. If we don't, we can't stop this. But I would say this, that we should identify those children that have family here, and we should say to them, OK, we'll arrange that so you don't have to be a victim of the people traffickers, but can come legally. The more people can come legally, the less business the people traffickers get, and the safer the channel will be for everybody. Why does somebody who just finds himself in Calais one assumes through a fairly lengthy journey. Why does that person have a right to come to the UK? Well, I'm not saying that I'm not saying they have a right to it. Depends on what we say. But there are people who get to Calais because they often they are young people who've got family here, and when when they're living in in bleak refugee camps or just fleeing for their lives from war and persecution, then it's not surprising they'll say, "Well, where can I find safety? Wherever I have family." And a small number of all the refugees arriving in Europe do have family in, in, in Britain. That's why they make their way to Calais. Henry, we all do the same thing. Henry Bolton, um, how, how would you respond to that? I mean, Alf Dubs there picking up specifically on vulnerable children. Good afternoon. And I don't think we can yet hear Henry Bolton. We will have Henry back with us, I hope, in a few moments just to respond to that. Um, Lord Alf Dubs, I mean, just talk us through as uh, in terms of the, the almost impenetrable dilemma that governments over the years have found themselves in. And Boris Johnson's government are experiencing uh, exactly the same thing right now. The sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't problem. Do you see that's very much the, the headline behind where the government are right now? Well, the government, the government said they wanted to take control of our borders and, and the news media all show pictures of people who are ignoring that. So it's, it's not surprising. But look, I wonder if we can keep it in proportion. We're essentially a humanitarian country. And a refugee is somebody who's fleeing for safety from war, persecution, fear of torture. I talked to a Syrian boy uh, some time ago. He'd seen his father blown up in front of him by a bomb, either in Aleppo or Damascus. That's a terrible thing to happen to a young person. So if we give safety to a small number of young people, we can't take everybody, a small number of young people, we're being humanitarian and we're doing the right thing by humanity and we're giving people a chance to have decent lives. But Surely that's something the British public would accept. I, I think I think you're right, Alf. I think many people listening to that put it as you put as you did would say, yes, we absolutely have a proud history. And of course, you are um, a, a, an example of exactly why this country has a proud history of assisting people in, in vulnerable places. The suspicion is that we're not really talking about vulnerable refugees. We're just talking about economic migrants, people who might come from a place where their government isn't exactly progressive or tickety-boo. But nonetheless, they're thinking, I can have a better life in the UK. So I mean, in that respect, well, that's, a, that's a very different story. Not everyone there in Calais is fleeing a war zone. 
No, not everybody is. I, I, I accept that, of course. It, uh, human nature being what it is, some, some of them will be people who are simply seeking to have, to have a better life. But then we've got to separate those from the ones that are fleeing persecution, that are fleeing threats of torture, that are fleeing war. We've got to separate those and find a sense of way of doing it. Okay. And we've got to cooperate with the French in order to achieve that. Let- you can't just say we'll have, a, we'll have the Navy and the Channel somehow stopping it. This isn't how it's going to work. Cooperation with the French must be the name of the game. Okay. We've got to do it. Uh, Alf, stay with us. I think we've got Henry Bolton back with us. Uh, can you hear us, Henry? Oh, we thought we did. Oh, did I hear a scintilla of Henry Bolton's voice then? I think he was going to say something earlier. But... Yes. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. Alf, we'll, we'll, we'll continue because it's lovely chatting with you, sir. Um, I'm, ju- I am, I'm just aware that whenever these conversations happen, they do tend to... I mean, nobody wants to see anybody drown. Nobody wants to see, you know, a, a woman with a small baby crossing the channel. I mean, at the moment, we're seeing this happen in, in, in midsummer, but we know, and, and you and I have spoken about this before, this happens in midwinter when temperatures out at sea are below zero. Nobody wants to see anybody in that perilous position. But by the same same token, a, a country does have to have an immigration policy, doesn't it? And it, it's that it's finding that line between what you rightly say, vulnerable people who've witnessed and experienced terrible things going on, and those that just want a better life. Again, I don't blame the ones who want a better life, but that's not just because you want it doesn't mean to say you should have it. No, of course not. And I think we've got to separate those that have a claim to refugee status under the 1951 Geneva Convention and those that are seeking uh, are, are seeking to come for other reasons. If they want to come for other reasons, then it's up to this country, and there's an immigration bill going through Parliament now, to decide on what basis people can come to this country to, to, with jobs and, uh, and so on. That's that. But the people who are fleeing for safety, we have to look at differently. Okay. And I think we share some of the responsibility for those people who are seeking safety. Let, we can't, it's not uh, our problem. OK, I'll stay there. Let, let me just bring in, I think we have Henry with us now on a, a, a different line. Henry Bolton, good afternoon to you. What are you making of, I mean, Lord Alf Dubbs making the point there that we have, you know, we've had a, we've had a proud history and we have perhaps a moral duty to look after vulnerable refugees. Uh, Good morning, Ian. Sorry about that. We were on fibre broadband, but it's uh, maybe the weather. But, um, yeah, uh, there are are people who are legitimate refugees, and Lord Dubbs was talking earlier about the family reunification element of of international refugee or asylum law, which, which applies in that case. But the other side of this coin is that the majority of these people who are actually moving to the North French coast and then attempting to cross... And, and, and still the crossings are taking place in the back of trucks as well. We shouldn't forget that. But the people who are trying to get across the channel in boats or trucks, most of them are economic migrants. And even this morning, um, a, a, a television channel put out an interview with a, 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 an individual who was from Mauritania, so he claimed. And he had a French accent. He clearly speaks French. He was in France. But he was trying to get to the UK to get an education and to find accommodation. Well, he has travelled through the European Union, through a number of, of what's technically called third safe countries, um, and to the French coast to come to the UK. We've got to look at why that happens. It's not only about family reunification. And the problem here is that a lot of a lot of people advocate um, just sort of effectively opening our borders to economic migrants because they're in a sort of a more difficult position than maybe we are settled here. However, the principle, not the legal requirement of international sort of best practice on this, the principle of it is that a, an asylum seeker should seek asylum in the first safe country that they reach or ones that they subsequently travel through where they, they're able to claim asylum. That's not what's happening here. Um, they are deliberately trying to come to the UK because the UK actually, despite everybody's criticism of it here, has a very generous welfare state. It provides education. It provides all sorts of things. And so we have that pull factor. And we've got to account for that too. But I, if I can also say, I totally agree with Lord Dubbs that we have to be, um, we have to make sure that we assess these people's claims correctly. My my preferred solution to this is not what the Home Office is trying to do, which is to uh, turn these boats back in mid-channel. I think that's intrinsically dangerous. I think the UN uh, Convention of the Law of the Seas and the UN, um, what's called SOLAS, the Safety of Lives at Sea, prohibits such activity. Um, 
And I think the, well, I've spoken to very senior people in the Home Office, and I know they haven't got a clue what they're doing here. Um, it's not something that they've had to deal with before outside the framework of the European Union and, and Dublin, something called the Dublin Three Agreement. So what we should be doing is actually ensuring that these people do safely cross. Once they're at sea, it's very difficult to turn them back in an overladen, day, overladen dinghy in the busiest water way of the world um, safely. It puts them at risk. It potentially puts border force crews at risk. And potentially, if, if you try to take them back on a border force vessel, it put, puts that vessel at risk because they're not designed for that sort of work to keep these people safe on board. So should these so, people, just very briefly, Henry, because we are short of time now, uh, but should these people be processed in France? Uh, no, uh, because th th that's a very impractical thing to do. Keep them, as we would at an airport, keep them airside, or in this case, waterside of immigration controls, put, screen them, health care check, welfare check, check their asylum claim. If Sorry, where, where do you do that? Country, you do that in, we send them back. Where, where are, you do that on British soil? At, at Dover. Just okay. like if somebody came into Gatwick Airport, you'd keep them airside of the immigration All controls. Right. It's no different. It's just that we're used to you, EU procedures on this we have been for decades now and the home office is conditioned okay. to that they are not applying international standard behavior okay henry thank you um uh, lord alf dubs thank you. we were going to come back to alf but we, i'm aware that we were slightly short on time we got scuppered by some technicals on henry's line there but lord alf dubs labor life peer uh, who's one of the czech children of course rescued from the nazis uh, in the kinder transport uh, henry bolton has advised numerous uh, governments on strategic border management and security challenges and of course a former ukip leader